kind of want to let you know off the bat that we're, we know we're going places in this film, Big Mama's House. Martin Lawrence plays my grandmother. Hi, Big Mama! Damn, you fine. I'm, I'm... It's a movie in which Martin Lawrence is in a dress and, and in like a 300-pound fat suit. And I could go on and on about the story, but when I say that, people automatically say I gotta go see it. Daryl Quarles came into my office. He pitched the idea for Big Mama's House. Just describing this one-line idea, I said, that's a hit movie. We're buying that, and you're writing that for us. I thought it was a funny script. It was something I wanted to do. I was focused on the story and, and preparing a way to present it as visually and as entertaining as possible. The movie opens with a big set piece where he's in cover in prosthetics. We set from the first frame that this guy is able to assume these characters and go into these dangerous situations as someone completely different. They're in a dog fighting club. We felt we needed to start the movie with a bit of a bang and we need to establish the world of Martin's character. Malcolm is a master of disguise. 10,000. Mm. On, uh, my guy. What? Big balls. I'm big gone. The challenge for us was where are we going to put him? At one point we had him, I think, in a gambling den in downtown Los Angeles, and we finally wound up with this dog fighting sequence because it, it seemed unique. So we built a set on the back lot at Universal, and then we send this character in to uh, break up the illegal activity going on there. And of course, it spirals out of control. You do not play this Asian man that's uh, out there betting along with the other guys. John gets caught and now I have to save my partner's life. And so the mask comes off and everything and you see it's really Malcolm. I was a little nervous because I was like, how am I going to play an Asian? I never even impersonated an Asian man before. But it was just kind of ironic that once you get into all that prosthetic, a certain demeanor comes to you. and. Uh, <laughs> it's as new for me as it is for y'all. Y'all ain't never heard of Soul Korea? Oh, so dead. When you go out and hire Martin Lawrence, you want to make sure that the audience is getting Martin Lawrence. What the hell are you doing? I've gone undercover as Big Mom. Early on in the process, when we did a number of makeup tests. Welcome to Big Mama's Southern Cooking. We worked over and over to refine the look so that it was credible. On the one hand, you would believe that this was truly a 350-pound Southern grandma. <laughs> but we also wanted to make sure that Martin Lawrence's comedic genius was coming through. Thought you may have forgotten all about me. Oh, no. <laughs> Big Mama could never forget that ass. <laughs> Ma. He's actually taking the place of a legitimate living, breathing woman who lives in this town. Martin's nose is a little larger than mine. So they enlarged my nose, but then I have the cheeks and things that Martin doesn't have. So we met halfway. They gave him some of me. <laughs> that sounds funny. And they gave me some of him. What we're doing today is we have Ella Mitchell. Uh, she is the actress who has been cast as Big Mama. Martin Lawrence in the film does up a disguise makeup to look like her. So we're taking her, all of her life casting, head, uh, head casts, hand casts, leg casts, so that we can build a suit and a makeup to fit on Martin that will look like her. Mama didn't tell me there'd be days like this. We're using overlapping silicone appliances because the movement and everything is much better than foam rubber. You start with the neck here, and then this will overlap onto the neck. So you end up with a full appliance like that. This is all a new silicone material we developed. It is so mushy. You can see how flesh-like it works. We would glue a chin on, silicone separate chin piece, and a top lip piece, and then two silicone side pieces. This is one of the old silicone makeups from the show. And you can see how uh, great this stuff moves. It's very fleshy compared to foam or that. And uh, has a lot of weight to it and everything. Which this is one of the legs. It's all sculpted by hand, all the pores are put in by hand. But we did actually cast Martin for the arms and legs and the whole full head cast. 
it's just so much work for weeks and weeks to get it perfectly and you know the boobs are too big the boobs are too small or too hot you know just trying to get everything proportionate something wrong Jack? It, uh, you're um <clears throat> Oh, oh, that. Oh, child. Oh, when you get to be my age, they're like yard dogs. If you don't put them on a leash, they'll just roam all over the neighborhood. The process is just very tedious, and uh, it requires uh, uh, many hours sitting in the makeup chair. It's a tough thing to sit there without moving for two hours, even. And Martin was great. He just sat there and went through it, because he wore it a lot of days. When he's wearing that makeup, it's really weird, because, I mean, it's so extraordinarily different because he's also got that bodysuit on. It's really freaky. Freeze! Surprise! Surprise! Linda Natero, who built the suit for us, and she did Mrs. Doubtfire and everything, and she's inc just incredible with the forms she can build. And it all moves and uh, has weight to it, and she had to do a lot of testing and work on this film because of like the basketball scene so that they could easily move around absolutely nothing was constricting them in any way or form oh so granny thinks she got game grandma knows she got game that's game until he spoke i thought it was the real big mama i thought it was a real lady you're too fat to be balling say what you look like a damn shaved bird. I've never had that much weight on me before. Steve, give me a wide shot of the court. It was a hot day. And action! Anybody who's in that thing that does anything physical perspires profusely and there's no place for the perspiration to go. We actually had an elaborate system with uh, ice water running through these tubes that were attached to him within the fat suit so that we would keep him cool during shooting. Immediately after every take, he would go into a tent that had that was an air-conditioned cool-off tent. And we had to just be very careful, especially in light of what had happened to him before the movie started. First of all, it's not the ideal thing <laughs> to do after a coma. Trust me. <laughs> but uh, I thank God I got through it. I was very, very excited about that. What trend we want? In the basketball scene, Martin was so funny. Okay, huh? you want to that scene was not in the original script, but when we conceived it, we felt this is a really big comic moment that we can play a lot out of. And Martin is a basketball player, so we took advantage of the fact that he had certain skills, even in that big fat suit, that he could show on screen. Even in the fat suit, he was very comfortable doing this scene because he's a basketball freak. I mean, the guy loves hoops. Look at you now, huh? Run in your mouth! Run in your mouth! Who would imagine a woman that size back dunking on the court? No way. That's gay! In the big mama suit, they have him jump on a trampoline and back dunk. That's gay! with pads low, pads under, so he can fall on. We knew that was a big, big moment for the movie. Let's do that. Yeah. Baby, back. Here we go, baby. Very, very hands-on in that on that day, what he wanted to do, how he wanted to do it, and making sure the trash talk was all credible, and making sure that the basketball stuff looked real. I'm back. Jump shot. Finger roll. He <laughs> really gave us his all, and uh, it shows in the scene. Way back, please, the last two. Another part of the story is the budding relationship between Malcolm and Sherry, and there's a kind of an instant connection between them. What are you doing, Sherry? Although she doesn't really understand that that's happening, there's a connection from his point of view. Well, morning, Sherry. Uh, hey. Trump wanted waffles. Uh, have a seat. Mm. Mom, I'm gonna have some toast. He's been falling for her the whole time. He's been living in the house with her, and there's all that kind of sexual tension going on. Ooh. Oh. 
he, of course, is big mama, can't express himself to her. The rapport that we have when he is big mama is a lot different than when he's Malcolm. And I think it's just him being in the suit, the voice changing, and it's also the process that we have together as far as getting into character. Nia's is one of the toughest roles in the movie, actually, because she's on the run with her child, running away from this bad guy. She has secrets that she's trying to hide. You know, her story is basically the story of the movie. She has to be a legitimate lady in distress for those sort of moments, but also she has to play opposite Martin in these very big comedic scenes. <laughs> First and foremost, she's definitely the type of girl who really, really loves her grandmother. Big Mama, do you remember this? And thinks that her grandmother might just be going senile. Big Mama, is that duct tape on your face? And that's kind of why she goes with Big Mama with a lot of the, the jokes and the strange things that happen and the strange behavior. Oh, Sherry! Nia has the acting chops and has a range of ability that we thought was great, plus the striking beauty that Cameron just loves her. Big Mama, I just want to make sure that if I ever have to go away for a long time, that you have something to remember me by. We shot a lot of the movie in Orange County, doubling for Cartersville, Georgia. We searched all over. We sent out three or four location scouts all over Los Angeles looking for what Raja wanted, which was a homey southern feel. Well, howdy, ladies. Hello, neighbor. A neighborhood atmosphere that looked very Georgian. What we came up with was a city in orange that was still very colloquial and the homey, old-style feel that we would expect to find in Georgia. Roll Rolling. Parker. Action Martin. Action Joshua. No, um, Big Mama will be right back. Can you stop at the chicken store and pick me up uh, two good chickens to pump one? So? And please make sure they got the feet and the beaks. I don't want none of that biological chicken. Cut. Very nice. I think we got that one. The house is very realistic. It's filled with warmth and love and history. And you have a sense of what's made her the person that she is within these walls. Once we get to Big Mama's house, Everything that you can possibly imagine happens. I'm a handyman. Whoa! What's that? That was just my flashlight. Oh, yeah. The nice thing about seeing these two actors work together was there seemed to be a natural chemistry between them. Yeah, I do all kind of fishing. Just never caught anything worth holding on to. Well, maybe you're using the wrong bait. He tells his partner that he's going to go talk to her as Malcolm rather than as Big Mom because he's getting nowhere, getting information. You know, John, if you was thinking straight, you realize Malcolm's our best shot for cracking this case. You blew your cover. Of course, we all know that his, his real motive is because he's falling in love with her and wants to sort of meet her as himself and as a man and, and date her. It was like one of the first times that we got a chance to do a scene as Malcolm and Sherry. It's like acting with a totally different person because it's another character. The scene at the lake is, is a really sweet and touching scene and it's one that you see they really enjoy each other's company. We used a very shallow lake in Coldwater Canyon and we were able to build different docks out and things like that that would make it easier to shoot on. And also it ties in Trent uh, her son, who has a kind of an affinity for Malcolm. And they appear as a really lovely little family unit in that scene. Oh, my God. Are you okay? Sweetie, get me the camera. Thank you. We had a good time with it, but it was cold. The guy I play is definitely not a field operative kind of guy. <laughs> He's sort of the guy who sits back with the headphones on, the tape recorders going, and puts the bugs, you know, does all that kind of stuff. So he's not used to dealing with anything outside of that realm. It's very interesting, this picture, because it's, it has moments of intense drama. There's a really legitimate bad guy. Scratch, 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 went the clawing at my door. Who's there? I said, hoping it was only my imagination. But it also has moments of very broad comedy. <laughs> Why don't you back that thing up and show me what you got, what you gonna do? I play Nolan, 
overzealous security guard at Walmart. Oh, wait, everybody freeze! Ah, damn, you freeze! Oh, damn, y'all done cut Big Mom up into little pieces! Oh, 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 Nobody's done nothing to Big Mom. <laughs> FBI! Oh! You can see, I have a side job teaching uh, self-defense to uh, all the older women in Georgia. Maybe you're in a dark alley. Maybe not. Maybe you're walking home from a church social. I take a lot of old ass. I just, I think I go a little overboard. Um, I beat up a 72-year-old woman. Don't you think you're being a little rough on the ladies? Big Mama comes to their defense and, you know, lays one on me. Late for what? Church. We're living in five minutes. Six minutes, Mark. The point I'm trying to make is. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. Our secrets eat away at us. Church scene was probably one of my highlights of the film. I had always had the song "Oh Happy Day" in my mind for this scene. I think it has just this great energy to it and great heart to it. And so we always envision playing that song underneath the scene. He hears the piano, and then he hears the choir, and then he stops, and then he looks at everybody. It's like this. Oh, happy day. You know, it's one of those classic moments where he has to sort of scramble to keep up. Everybody was a part of that. You know, I'm talking about from the person in the back pew to the person in the front pew. The energy that they gave to it, you know, that which in turn allowed me to give energy right back. A wonderful scene that I'm, I was very glad to be a part of and very glad that we shot. It was that day, I think, that Martin came with all of his abilities and all of his focus and truly knocked it out of the park. We were able to shoot it out in a church that's right here by Universal Studios, so it was convenient, but the inside looks exactly like a southern church. We filled it with a whole bunch of extras, got a very talented person named Cedric the Entertainer to play the preacher. The Lord took my dialing finger, and after about three rings, three rings, three rings. It actually was a scene unto itself in that we didn't have to give any direction to the crowd. Once Martin and Cedric were doing their lines from the script, the crowd just played along as if it was an actual church on a Sunday morning. The first take was a long master where he had to come in the church as Big Mama, come down the aisle, go to his seat, be called upon by the Reverend to testify, go through about three pages of dialogue, and then launch into Oh Happy Day. And on the first take, he did it absolutely flawlessly. And I remember turning to Raja saying, you just shot some comedy history here. In addition to the comedy where he's actually talking to Neil Long's character. Some of us live secret lives. We don't want people to know the real us. She's the suspect in this is part of this crime and he's saying you gotta confess your sins and and so there's the scene works on several levels. Our secrets they eat away at us. So, if we want to be protected, hear me now. We got to confess everything. In the early drafts of the script, and when we were in the development process, Raja and I realized that this movie really was crying out for a bigger piece in the church. And it became very natural to think that Big Mama would be called upon to testify. <laughs> Thank you.
It was in that moment that I think I really realized the true potential for the film. About 50% of the movie is shot on stage at Universal Studios. We built an exact replica of Big Mama's house on two stages, one floor on each stage. There's a long party sequence at the end that was a lot of fun to shoot. Why'd you let all these people in here in the first place? It's a surprise party. I didn't know anything about it. Keep your eyes open. I'm dancing with one of the FBI, and Martin shows up, and it's the first time in the whole film that we come face to face. He's looking me up and down, I'm looking him up and down, and we're both going, I'm going, what the? Oh, we can't, and then everybody at the party is looking at both of us. Wait, we have two big mom. I think that's my favorite part. From the minute Martin heard about the project, I think he felt an affinity for the character. I mean, he's a lot of fun because he's, you know, he's constantly changing stuff and improvising stuff. It's really fun. Sometimes he goofs around, but he's really concentrated in this film. Big Mama's House is the story of an FBI agent who has to go undercover portraying a Southern grandmother, Hattie Mae Pierce. And by becoming this character, he himself becomes a better man. He learns to reprioritize his life, and he comes out of it with a whole different set of values. A good story, plot, uh, humor, talent in this movie. I think the cast is wonderful. Just let yourself go. Nothing I want to talk about, it, but thank everybody who goes see a Martin movie. <laughs> thank you. That's it.